Sisters, welcome, welcome to the Sandtown Church of Christ Ladies' Day. Sisters and friends, welcome to another evening with the sisters in Sandtown. The Ladies' Ministry of the Church of Christ in Sandtown thanks you for coming to spend a few moments of your time with us today. We pray that you are edified by all that you hear and experience this evening. And now we will have a poem from my sister Darlene Grant of the East Baltimore Church of Christ called Beyond Our Limitation. Darlene, you need to take your mute off. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sister Darlene Grant, now from the East Baltimore Church of Christ. And the poem I'm about to read is called Beyond Our Limitations. Beyond Our Limitations. Lord, we need to move beyond this place that we are in to touch you, your very heart, oh God, to have your love within. We need to move beyond the limits where peace, where, I'm sorry, where place upon our lives to move into more of you revealed through Jesus Christ. Help us to keep pressing on as by faith, we take more steps to really conquer our inner selves, to know you with more depth. Help us Lord to overcome, to focus more on you, no matter how hard it gets for us. We need to press on through. Though Satan rise with hell's fury and vengeance to devour, we pray, O oh God, you'll arise in us and fight with holy power. For greater are you within us than the enemy of our souls. For you have power and might, O oh God, and your spirit is in control. We know the victory shall be ours, though for now the heat is on. Help us, Lord, not to give up. For by faith, for by this, you make us strong and you will sustain us in your love. Though whatever we go through, whatever we're going through and deliver us the other side, victory in you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Darlene. Now Thank we will have our opening prayer by Sister Janelle Robinson. Good evening, my sisters. Welcome to our ladies' day. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious, most heavenly Father, we come to you at this time 
Just thank you for this marvelous day that you blessed us with. Thank you, dear God, for another opportunity to sit in your presence, dear God. Father, let us give you the glory, the honor, and the praise through this program that the things we may learn and we can apply them into our everyday life, dear God. Please forgive me for my many sins and shortcomings that this prayer may not be handled. Bless everyone as they come into our event this evening, dear God, that we will just be pleasing and acceptable in our sight. These and all of the blessings we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, sis. All right, ladies, we have an icebreaker, and today's icebreaker will be done by a poll. If you're familiar with Zoom, I'm going to launch a poll, and you're going to pick the response that is most suited for you, and I'm going to share the results. So it's called, Would You Rather? And you'll get a couple options. So on your screen, would you rather be a good cook or be a good hostess? Would you rather have a personal maid or butler or have a personal chef? And then finally, would you rather be loved? I'm sorry, there's two more. Or be respected? And would you rather entertain or be entertained? So let's take a moment and answer the question. You got about a quarter of the people answered so far. Trey, am I able to do it? Co-host may not be able to do it. Oh, okay. So I can un-co-host you for a minute so you can respond to the poll. I'll do that for all y'all. All right, we've got just over half of the people responding. Let's take another 30 seconds. Would you rather be a good cook or a good hostess? Would you rather have a personal maid butler or a personal chef? Would you rather be loved or respected? And would you rather entertain or be entertained? All right, counting down. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're going to end the poll. And looks like the results are 81% of those who answered said they'd rather be a good hostess. 50, oh, this is almost even. 53% to 47% said they'd rather be or have a personal chef than a maid or a butler. I don't know. If I've been able to answer it, I might say a maid or a butler because I can cook. The next one, would you rather be loved or be respected? Be loved is what most people said. And then finally, would you rather entertain or be entertained? That's almost even too. Most people said they'd rather entertain. So let's start there. Who said they'd rather entertain? Tell me why you chose that. This Sister Rita, um, I said I like to entertain because I like to serve. I like to help people. And so I like to make sure I'm thinking when you said entertain, I'm thinking about having sisters over and being able to serve them and just have them feel comfortable in my home or in a comfortable environment. Okay, wonderful. The vast majority, about more than two thirds, said they'd rather be loved than respected. Who chose love than wants to share? I chose love. This is Sister Lakaya Moore from New Haven. Hey. Um, I said I'd rather be loved because if someone loves you, they will respect you. Okay. All right. Sister Worley. Ma'am. Sister Murray Brown here. Okay. I chose, I'm um, going back to entertain. I like to entertain because I like people to feel special. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Okay. Anybody else want to hit entertain or love? Who chose that? How and about someone? Go ahead. And love, right. I think that um, I think I chose love because it just makes you feel more um warm and fuzzy and family like. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now this one is pretty even. Who, somebody said personal maid or butler and somebody said chef. So who said chef and wants to share why they chose chef? I chose, I chose um, to have the personal chef because I have OCD with cleaning and I don't want, I wouldn't want them to clean it. <laughs> okay. Who chose Maid Butler? Unmute yourself and go on and respond. I chose Maid Butler because I felt that I would rather, you, ha you have to eat, so you're going to make sure you eat, but you find yourself, I have a lot of kids, so I find myself constantly trying to keep up with cleaning. I have the kids help with cleaning, but it never feels like it's clean the way you want it to be clean. And so we're going to remember to eat. So I felt like having someone come and help clean would take a burden. I hear that. That's what I'm saying. All right. And then the last one, the vast majority, as you can see, chose be a good hostess and not a good cook. Who chose hostess and wants to share? I chose to be a good hostess. Um, because I, I do like to host. I can cook, but I don't, that's not my, my gifting, <laughs> but I can cook. So I like to save my energy for the hosting. That's why I would prefer to have a chef. <laughs> All right. Now, what about the other side? Who, does, who picked cook? Sister Payne, I chose to cook because I love to cook and prepare my own food. I'm a little finicky. All right, finicky. I call you <laughs> kitty. All right, fantastic. Thank you for participating. It. Hopefully, we got a little got our juices warmed up because you know we're going to be talking about providing what is needed. And does a cook provide what's needed? Yes. Does a hostess provide what's needed? Think about Mary and Martha when Jesus came to visit. So this is where we are this evening. We're thinking about what we can do to provide what is needed, not only for ourselves, but for the edification of the body. So moving right along, we are going to have our sister Sybil Knight Bernie introduce our first speaker. All right, ladies, ladies, are you ready? Are you getting ready? Because our next... <laughs> It's truly <laughs> give us something to be ready for. So, got to get ready. Are you ready? I'm getting ready because she's going to provide what's needed. But you got to have your stuff together. Okay. All right. Because I'm going to introduce her, but I want all y'all to be ready. And you'll know why. Got my weights too, sis. All right. Sis, I'm ready now. Providing what's needed, I'm going to provide her intro to you. Sister Erica S. Payne, she is a soldier in the kingdom of God, and she has been working for God for over 30 years. She's currently a member of the Harford County Church of Christ in Bella, Maryland, and the minister is John Wilkie. Um, over the years, she has taught Sunday and Wednesday Bible school for young girls and adult ladies. She's spoken on special topics, including mindset, temple care, nutrition, exercise, lifestyle changes workshops, community outreach, wellness workshops at the Mid-Atlantic Lectureship. And this is a specialty. She teaches or she has an online Christian wellness where she does coaching. And this all helps women transform their temple, their spirit, soul, and body. Sister Payne is a native Baltimorean. She's a graduate of Towson University in Towson, Maryland, and she has a degree in psychology and sports psychology. 
She is a certified personal trainer. That's why you see me with my weights. The American College of Sports and Medicine. She's got advanced certified temperament life coaching through National Christian Counseling Association. She's just a bad mama jam, okay? This is the heavy. She's worked in a number of capacities from psychiatric therapy, residential counselor, case management, healthcare, security investments, construction lending, and even in real estate investing. This sister can do it all for you. She's also an author, an athlete, innovator, entrepreneur, realtor, and most importantly, a self-care advocate. She's also been featured several times in Voyage Baltimore Magazine, for those of you in Baltimore who are familiar with her. And it this magazine featured her as one of the most inspiring stories. And she was interviewed on the Gospel Train, and she has spoken on several health and inspirational podcasts. Sister Payne enjoys reading, traveling, living on the ocean, music, sports, weight training, and encouraging individuals to reach their new self-love, limitless potentials via the word of God. She is currently single with no children. She resides in Baltimore City, where she operates globally, her Christian wellness life coaching. Sister Erica is a bad mama jamma. If you've ever been to one of her her sessions, you know she works you out. That's why I got my barbells <laughs> here. I'm working out, and I want y'all to get ready for her because she's finna give you a powerful lesson. All what you need, Sister Payne. Amen. All Amen. right, Sister Rita. Now, thank you, Sister Sybil. Sister Rita is now going to read our scripture, and then we will hear from Sister Payne. Good afternoon, ladies. Sister Payne has chosen the scriptures for Romans twelve. 1 and 2, um, again, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that, excuse me, ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That was Romans 12, 1 and 2. I know you got it, Erica. You on mute. Hey, all right. Thank you. Batter up, Dot. I was waiting to be cued in. I, I think I, I think that that's my time. Thank you, y'all. Appreciate y'all having. No, I'm just kidding. Girl, you better come <laughs> on, girl. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you so much again, uh, Doc, for having me on. I call uh, Dr. Tracy Worley, uh, Doc, uh, Sister Worley has blessed me in many ways over the years. Um, thank all of you tonight uh, for being on. And I'm going to jump right in because I want to certainly mind the time, but also I want to take the time to to challenge you a little bit tonight. Uh, in a loving way, but a really get down uh, to the bottom of where we are and what we are providing, what's needed, and in our personal sacrifice. So I'm going to share my screen and be going to get started here. I can bear with me, move some of this stuff around on the screen. Okay, so how do we go from the beginning? There we go. Okay, all right. So here we go. Living. So I have living slash personal sacrifice because I'm gonna again challenge you a little bit further what it means to be a living sacrifice. Now catch that a living sacrifice because when you hear the word sacrifice, if you run back down through history a bit in the Old Testament, that means something had to die, right? So. Three topics tonight, or three uh, subjects I'm, I'm going to touch on really briefly, again, just to, to cause you to, to challenge you a bit in your own personal recesses, what you are doing with your personal sacrifice to God. So I have here priestesshood, basically priesthood, right? But we're women, priestesshood, sacrificial life. Your calling as lively, spiritual, holy, chosen, royal, and peculiar. And then I'm going to end with the rolled to total temple transformation and what that looks like, okay? All right. 
There we go. Okay, so I am not going to read a lot of the slides that I have tonight, but they're really for effect. And as you're thumbing and reading through, follow my words. So as I was preparing this lesson, I was like, man, you know, the space that I'm in right now, it's, it's very personal. I'm in a growth spurt. And we all know growth hurts. And if you say you're growing, it don't hurt something wrong because it takes um, some getting uncomfortable. And so I wanted to run back. When you talk about a sacrifice, the history, uh, first of all, the, the priests, the Levites were the call, right? And so I wanted us to launch first from where we read, where we are priests. And so I highlighted here uh, in Second Peter chapter, I believe this is chapter two, and it says uh, in verse five, ye also are lively stones, built up spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Did you catch that? To offer up spiritual sacrifice. So you have to be positioned first to offer sacrifice. So we are called priest or priestess, right? Drop down to verse nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation peculiar or special people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I highlighted down here because this is what I'm really going to end on, but are now the people of God. We are God's daughters, his children, which have now had not obtained mercy in the past, but now have attained mercy. So again, what I'm doing is I'm laying the foundation of what it means to offer a personal sacrifice. So again, where did it come from? So the first mention of any type of sacrifice first was in the garden. So you remember when Adam and Eve sinned, well, Eve sinned, but, but who got called? Adam and God said, come in. And he, he gave them their charge for sin. And then he went on to clothe them. Okay, so again, the, the whole foundation that I was looking to lay here is simply where did sacrifice come from? And so you had a Levitical priesthood, which I really just wanted to highlight what was called during that time. And so during that time, uh, sacrifices, you remember that when the, the, and this is the burnt offering sacrifices, what was expected? So all I wanted to highlight was expectation because I want to move to what it looks like for you and I today. And then certainly Jesus to Christ, he did the ultimate sacrifice, right? The one time in his blood was shared and that was the only sacrifice ever needed, even now that covers those who are obedient to his word. Praise God for that. So with that said, you know, kind of hasten on here a bit. I'm not going to read this as well. She read this coming in. I wanted to highlight what does it mean to offer your personal or your living sacrifice? So let me highlight the words here. So to be a living sacrifice, you got to give up something, sisters, is where I'm going. Some work has to take place. And this is the amplified version. It reads a little bit different. A living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, in, uh, intelligent, or act of worship. And the King James just says, which is your reasonable service. And so these two words here is where I'm going to spend some time the next like five, five or seven minutes or so. And to be not conformed. So don't be like what you see, but be transformed. So let me get right to that. Transformation is simply this. And I just, I love the illustration of a butterfly because it's one of the most popular examples of what a metamorphosis is or what that word transforms mean. When you understand what it means, then it will help you to understand what it looks like in your life. Okay. So it simply means going from one thing, in this case, a caterpillar, to a butterfly. Here's a distinct thing I wanted to highlight on this slide. Do you notice when a caterpillar goes to a butterfly, it can't go back to the thing that it was? Just follow me for a minute because I'm taking you somewhere, right, where we are in 2024, what it means to transform. And it's also, I, I had highlighted here, that same uh, use of that word is used over there when Jesus was transfigured on the mount. He changed, right? So, Let's bring it to 2024. What are you offering? What are you providing? What's your personal sacrifice? Do some of us look like this today? Now, I know this sounds a little silly, but think about it. Is this our daily sacrifice? Because I'm not talking about the worship assembly on Sunday. Do you know that we offer up 
praise offerings and sacrifice on a daily basis. And so my challenge to you is, is when you are presenting your gift before God, what are you, what are you bringing? And it's not that this is a bad state. I want to help us to recognize where we are. So when we talk about what we're bringing, we got to go through something. If we're going to be an example to the world, an example in helping them to see what it means to transform, we got to clean up our own house and make our sacrifices to him holy, acceptable, which is our what? Reasonable service. Here's another slide. And these slides now are really, I'm digging into what does your sacrifice look like? Now, I'm not pointing fingers here because I'm matching all these slides. But what I want to help us to see, in order to move from our old self, that is when you come into the body of Christ. You become a new creature, but you haven't been transformed yet. Has anybody been baptized and a day later, I'm going to just say smoking cigarettes. Some of us might, whatever your challenge is, just think about it for a moment. Were you baptized into the body of Christ and as soon as you came up, you stopped smoking? Most people know it's a habit. There has to be some deprogramming. A lot of us, some of us late, we walk around, we look like this, but we got this going on upstairs. Let's get another one. A living sacrifice. Is your sacrifice a masquerade ball? Erica, sit, Shane, what are you talking about? I remember so Erica used to walk around with a bag full of masks. In other words, I look very well in my persona. As a, a child of God in the kingdom, what I portrayed, but when I got home and took that mask off, you see what I'm saying? What does it mean? What do you bring? What are you providing? What is your personal sacrifice? Here's where we're moving to, and I'm, and I'm done. I think I have probably one more slide here. Here we go. Here's another illustration. I'm moving us to what does it mean to be a living sacrifice? Thank God for the blood of Jesus that helps us to move through. But what I'm helping us to see, sister, you got to do some work. All of these, listen, I'm not reading all of these, but I put them up here for a reason. Some of us deal with what's called strongholds or limiting beliefs, lies, our old self way of thinking, tradition and values. Sis, what has all this got to do with sacrifice? It has everything to do with it. If we're walk, if I'm walking around 30 years later, still struggling with something back 30 years ago, that's a stronghold or limiting belief. I got some work to do. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't be working through something. And I'm going to help us to see here in this next slide. Now we move into how do you do it? How is it done? All those slides I just mentioned, I wanted you to challenge you to look into your personal recesses, whatever your stuff is, because we all got stuff. My sister with Salisi, uh, Sister Renee, I had an awesome time on the line with them helping us look at bags. Well, you, you guys remember where Erica Body bag lady? We got some stuff. And in essence, to move from old self way and ways of sacrifice and that is not acceptable to new self living and pleasing the self, we got to clean up some stuff. Total temple transformation is on a three-tier level, spirit, soul, and body. You can read those scriptures later. My challenge to you tonight, and I'm done here, is what are we putting off? That word crucify or mortify means to kill. Remember I mentioned earlier, how can you be a living sacrifice? It's like you, you, you're giving up something, you're killing something, but you're still here. It's constantly, right? And so here's the remedy. I encourage every single one of us, me included, where do you start? Self-examination on the road to presenting your best to God. You need to do a self-examination. Yeah, you can sit down and decide what you want to do. You know, it's okay to do that. But before you go to God, know what you want and where you're going. I think sometimes we just say a prayer and then we just want the God to just do it. It don't work that way. And I got some examples when I close out here that almost every single biblical character, whether it was a king, a queen, a woman, or a man, they went through something. And in order for God to help to groom and grow them, they had to go through something. So I'm going to challenge you and I. Self-examination. Count the cost. Forgiveness is simply let some stuff go. Let people go. You need to let stuff that you did go. He already done forgave you. Stop pulling it back up. Real talk prayer with God, repent, love and grace and mercy, pray for wisdom, guidance, walk by faith, uh, faith and not by sight. 
It's time to take some action, get moving. You guys know, I mean, I didn't mention anything about ex exercise tonight because it's much deeper than the physical. But even with that, it takes a transformation in the spiritual. And this is my last slide. With everything that I just shared tonight, is one thing to say that you know, because a lot of us know, but it's another thing to do it. Knowledge is not power unless you do something with it. I want to challenge you all tonight in your private clauses, clauses and recesses. Examine your personal sacrifice to him. Because remember, we have a vertical relation, a relationship as well as a horizontal. The vertical one with him above and us is the number one which comes first and everything thereafter. These were the characters that I mentioned. Every single one of them went through a struggle, a pain, a growth before they arrived at their greatest new self uh, example. Abraham did it with faith. Moses did it with carrying Egypt over. David did it with even with his um, being a, a, a man after God's own heart. He had to go through some stuff. Solomon did it. Ruth did it with the example with Naomi. Esther did it. When, you see what I'm saying? They had to go through something. I'm done. Prayer, hope, and, and our leading and our example as God's children. Give God your best and offer up your best sacrifice. Thank you so much. Amen, sis. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, ladies, we are going to listen to a song of meditation before we bring on our next speaker. Call on him, 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 call on him. Brother, my sister, I see you. Do you need a hand? It seems that you're hurting and no one would stop, listen, or lend a hand. If you would, I would love to help you be there for you. Try to understand. But first, let me take you to the one who loves you, the one who wants you to call on him. Your pain is too deep and you could use some encouragement If you would, Jesus will help you, shape you, save you like no one can But first, you must hearken to the one who loves you, the one who wants you to Is 
So, ladies, I have a question, and please unmute yourself and and uh, type in whenever you want to. This is our testimonial time. We just heard a wonderful lesson about getting over our anxiety, our stress, the mask that we wear to hide the trueness that's going on with us. Sister Erica told us that we need to do a self-examination. She said we need to have some real talk with ourselves and have prayer with God about what it is. He said, she said, we have to walk by faith and have some action behind it. So let's think about who, how we would describe ourselves. Not the best case scenario, but truly, what would you call yourself? Are you a worry wart or are you cucumber cool? And I'll go first, because I think that even though I appear to be cucumber cool sometimes, I am a worry one. I may not articulate it, but internally I'm thinking. Like sometimes I can't even sleep because I got stuff on my mind. Mm -hmm. So I'd share first. Does anyone else want to share? I worry ward or cucumber place. cool? Go ahead, Sister Rita. I think I'm... Try and be cucumber cool, but it depends on the situation. And Satan, you know, knows what can attack us most. And so if we're not careful and stay focused, then we can get caught up. But I try to think I'm cucumber cool. Okay. Anybody else want to share? Um, All right. Before we bring on uh, the the uh, intro for our next. Hi, speaker. my name is Sister Janelle. Oh, go ahead, Janelle. And I don't, I don't think I'm cucumber. Sometimes I think I'm get um, impatient quicker than I'd like to, um, and it tends to make me come back later and just say, you know, you could have handled that better, um, and that's. Sometimes it's based on a um, a bias and a prejudicial approach to a situation. Like I know when I call my um, mobile carrier, sometimes I get, and as we all know, get foreigners. And if I get that, I'll hang up. And I don't think that's being... Christ like so I don't think sometimes I, I'm not cucumber cool. I'm the opposite end of where I should be. So that's something I'm trying to work on. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Monique, you got your hand up. You wanted to share? Yes. Um I don't think I'm I know I'm not cucumber cool. Um I might not be a worry ward, but I'm definitely um overthinker <laughs> and analyzer. And I always am trying to figure out how to 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 how to solve something. I have been trying to give things over to God, and I I get to the end of the day and I'm like, oh well, let me try this. <laughs> I, think I, I gotta figure it out, and I have a real hard time letting it go. But God is faithful, you know. When I truly like forget and just give it to Him and like turn my attention to something else, He works it out. So that's something I'm trying to work on. Amen. Thank you, sis. Felicia, what'd you say? So, sis, I will say I'm both. It all depends, right? You know, sometimes I'm a Martha 
with that anxiety, um, just moving and grooving, trying to do everything, making sure things are done. And then sometimes I could be merry. I could be real cool, sit at the feet of Jesus and ask to be still. And so I'll be honest, um, it depends on the situation, time and place. But, you know, I'm working on that balance. So, yes, both of them. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. What you say? Yes, thank you, Sister Erica, for bringing in that message. It aligns up to me speaking a couple of weeks ago about um, looking at self. I think the older and more mature in the word I get, the more calmer I become. Because now I'm looking at situations that I've overcome. It seems like sometimes they're repeated. And now I'm, I'm more calmer than I was before. So I think I'm progressing to being more of the calmer cucumber and, and not being so worrisome because I'm learning that Christ is always there. But I know that the faith has to be tested and, it, and it's tested in different levels. So I may have went through something dramatic maybe a few weeks ago and now I'm coming across something else, but I'm being more calmer because it's not the same. So I think every situation, it evolves us to being calmer cucumbers. Okay. And thank you. All right. Thank you, sis. Amy, did you have something? Yeah, I um <clears throat> I think I'm definitely not cool as a cucumber because I lose sight of God in all the details I feel like there's so many balls in the air and I got to pay attention to each one and I may pray in the morning and pray over the meals and pray at night but like during the day when I'm trying to you know manage all the juggle all the balls I I definitely start to um depend more on myself and um I just lose sight of him all right. Thank you for sharing that, sis. Many of us are probably in that scenario, depending on what's going on. So we're going to move right along and we're going to have our right. sister. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Myra. Um, there was a comment in there and I'm I'm going to take it. She won't mind me um, saying it since you put it in the comment section. And plus, this is one of my coworkers, too. So I'm happy she's on, Anne-Marie. She um, said, worry wart. And she said she's a worry wart, anxious Annie but I've been praying to overcome my anxiety and work towards becoming cucumber cool. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much. All right, our sister Sybil is going to come back and she's going to introduce our next speaker. All right, ladies. I mean, Sister Erica really brought it home. And, and you know what? She really talked about that transformation. And you know, transforming is a change. And we think about transformation when we talk about diet. And that's why I brought my weights because, you know, she's good with that as a coach too. But the other thing is she talked about working hard and that's what we have to do in our minds. We have to transform and change our thinking. And that only happens when we are truly reading God's word and trying to apply it to our lives. So we got to remember that. So thank you, Sister Walker, Sister Payne, for that, just that, that very instructional action kind of um, presentation you did for us. It really helps us. So now, you know, we got to get ready for Sister Myra Newton. And for that, got to put my napkin around my, my neck. Got to be prepared. Got the plate, got the knife, and it's not any ordinary Ooh, don't he's gonna cut you. Plus something that's gonna fill up this plate. You see, that's why I got it right here. Because she a heavy duty sister and she's gonna bring it to us. And I'm just gonna read her bio real quick for you. And then as I'm reading, y'all get y'all plates and your fork and your spoon, get your napkin, get your knife ready, because she's gonna have it. Bring it. It's gonna be a major entree. Sister Myra Olivia Newton has been a Christian for 36 years really since the tender age of eight. She grew up under the leadership of Brother Douglas Anthony Goodman of the Capital Church of Christ in Annapolis, Maryland. She's married to a wonderful man of God, Norman J. Newton Jr., 
who just happens to be the senior minister of the New Haven Church of Christ in New Haven, Connecticut. They've been blessed with four beautiful children, Maya 21, Mariah 20, NJ 16, and their nephew son, Sam, who's 23. The Lord has blessed Meyer with the opportunities and privilege to speak and encourage women through Ladies' Days events, Ladies' Bibles classes, Ladies' retreats. I'm here to tell you, she brings a powerful message. At Myra's local congregation, she assists in leading the ladies' ministry. She's the assistant leader on the health ministry, and she teaches youth Bible class. She's a registered nurse for a women's health clinic. Nothing gives her more joy than supporting her husband in all things, caring for her children, growing in her faith, and aiding in the encouragement and building up other Christian girls and women by the grace of God. And her favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And I told you, she's a heavy duty. She's got a lot for us to soak in, a lot for us to eat. So I hope you got your fork, your knife, and your plate. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Sister Newton, because I fill this up, fill us up so we can all right. Started. Thank you, Sister Sybil. Now, Sister Rita is going to read the scripture and then we will hear from Sister Newton. Rita, unmute. I'm sorry. I said all that good stuff and then I, I was, was on mute. The, um, I'm going to be reading, Sister Myra has selected Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And he, verse 38 says, Now it came to pass as they went, they entered into a village, a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about such serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she may help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall, which shall not be taken away from her. And that was Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Amen. Thank you so much, Sess. Thank you so much uh, for reading that scripture. Thank you so much. Um, Sister Tracy Worley and the Sand Sandtown Church of Christ for providing this venue for us to be encouraged and admonished in the Lord. Thank you, Sister Erica, for blessing us with that word, talking about transformation and how we make that transformation happen. Also, just thankful, thankful for um, all the sisters on here. I want to give a shout out, of course, to um, any sisters from the New Haven Church of Christ. <clears throat> it's a blessing to see you on here. It's a blessing to see all my sisters from the Mid-Atlantic area. Um, so I don't take it lightly. I thank God for the privilege just to be able to um, share his word um, with all women. So um, yes, sisters, our uh, theme as we are hanging out with the sisters tonight is providing what is needed. And I thought the scripture that was given um, to me was very fitting uh, with Marth, with Mary and Martha from Luke chapter 10, um, 38 through 42. I'm going to share my screen and we are going to be blessed with <clears throat> what the Lord has for us on tonight. I am just um, building upon what Sister Tracy um, laid out um, and building upon what uh, the sisters um, talked about. I think the games were all very fitting. The testimonies were very fitting 
um, you know, regarding being a word ward or being cool as a cucumber. Um, and it is so clear that we need help in this world today. <clears throat> we need um, to know what God needs from us. We need to know what we need from God so that we can present ourselves as the women he has designed us to be. <clears throat> so sisters, we're talking about providing what is needed. <clears throat> Sister Rita, she blessed us and she read the scripture so nicely. I'm just going to um, read it one more time from the Amplified Version to just get us going. Um, it says, now while they were on their way, Jesus entered a village called Bethany and a woman named Martha welcomed him into our home. She had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teachings. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. And she approached him and said, Lord, is it no concern to you that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and do her part. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, that which is to her advantage, which will not be taken from her. In our text, we see that Mary symbolizes devotion, worship, and the pursuit of spiritual growth. Her actions illustrate the importance of setting aside distractions to seek a deeper relationship with God. And Martha symbolizes service and action with an emphasis on practical duties. While serving is a, is a significant aspect of discipleship, the story shows that even good works can become distractions if they pull one away from the essential need for spiritual connection. Sisters, the question on the floor tonight is what do we need today? What do we need today? And I wanna encourage you to know that I believe we need Merry moments. Merry moments are those moments in the presence with Jesus. In our world and culture today, we are constantly being bombarded by voices, images, and all kinds of noises that are trying to get our attention. These noises are telling us our priority, what our priorities should be, where our devotion and loyalty should abide. If you are a career woman, you should be climbing the corporate ladder. If you are a single woman, you should be doing you, girl. If you are a mom, it should be all about the kids and they must be exposed to all the playgrounds, sports groups, social clubs, but no emphasis on fostering an intimate relationship with God, their creator. Ladies, in our scripture, it talks about how Martha was so distracted. The Greek word often translated as distraction is paraspaseo. It is a verb that means to draw away or to be pulled into different directions. The root word speo means to draw or to pull. And the prefix peri means around or about. Thus, paraspaseo conveys the idea of being pulled around or dragged away from something leading to a divided attention. Martha is described as being distracted with much serving while her sister Mary is sitting at Jesus's feet, cool as a cucumber. Here it illustrates how Martha's attention was diverted from what was most important, leading her to feel anxious and troubled we know God's word tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not the God of confusion, but he is the God of peace. So ladies, I get it. We live in the world of high-speed technology. Technology has made us addicted to multitasking. Look at how we receive news today. It is different than what it was 50 years ago when there was one anchor man. Walter Conkright, who read the news to you. 
Today, when you go to CNN, you have three anchors, the Dow Jones stock market index running across the bottom of the screen, the sports scores of three different games running down the side of the screen, the weather in one corner, breaking news in another corner, and the closed caption all going at the same time. Ooh. We carry a device that allows us to listen to music read, take notes, look up information, make posts, take a selfie, log out activities, pay our bills, and plus some. And sisters, we can do this all at the same time. I'm telling you, I know because I find myself doing it. I was walking in my neighborhood the other day and I found myself turning my tracker on, zipping up my jacket all while holding my back all while listening to my message that I was going to listen to while I was walking and trying to take notes. I said, what in the world? It's no wonder we feel like we're being pulled in so many directions all the time. This is why we need Mary moments. Mary knew how to make it her business to step away from the distractions and focus on what was most important. Mary was at peace and Jesus protected her and affirmed her from the outside influences. And that outside influence was her sister, Martha. And we see that Jesus said, Martha chose the one thing that was needed. And that was the better thing. Sisters, I know there's so much to do. How many of us often feel like either of these women? Ladies, we have a lot buying for our attention. We live in a world and society where we are applauded for multitasking. If you had any good sense when you went on that job interview, you would have prided yourself on being, prided yourself um, on your ability to multitask, to get the job done, to be efficient and effective. We are busy people. Movers and shakers, always going like the Energizer Bunny because there are so many things that we need that need to be done and not enough time to do it all. We are all distracted by so many things. And not to give you a, a lesson on the latest street safety, but before 2016, the leading cause for car accidents were speeding and drunk driving. Since 2016 up until now, the leading cause of uh, the leading cause of car accidents today is distracted driving. Driving while texting, driving while posting, driving while eating, driving while doing or recording and posting it, putting on makeup. We are trying to do too many things at one time, and it is leading to exhaustion, frustration, and burnout. We are neglecting what is necessary to help bring balance, peace, and purpose to our lives, sisters. Today's women are expected not to only cook the bacon, but also help bring it home. Even though she may work 40 hours plus, she is still expected to be the main housekeeper, cook the meals, wash the clothes, and take care of the children, and be the Uber driver all while obtaining her PhD. Their day is often from sunup to sundown. Many women are finding that this is not easy, and oftentimes it's impossible. Regardless of time schedules and calendar organizers, there is still only 24 hours in a workday, sisters. We often wish for 36 hours in a day so we could get everything done, but there is no such thing. With everything that is expected of them or of us, many women try to cut corners in order to make more time for a busy day. The problem with this is that one aspect that often gets cut out or overlooked is that of the spiritual. If anyone focuses only on the material and neglects the spiritual, they will not be fulfilled or happy. Going back to our text, Jesus comes to the city of Bethany and Martha welcomes Jesus into her home. Martha has a heart of hospitality and service. We can give Martha her props. She was a mover and a shaker. She obviously has some wealth and she had a home that could accommodate many and the food to feed many on any given day. If you are housing or hosting Jesus, you are most likely preparing for at least 30, 13 additional people. This is no easy responsibility. 
especially if this was not a scheduled visitation. Martha immediately went into action. She was cooking, cleaning, preparing, but Martha stepped away from all the busy work so that she could focus on what Jesus had to say. I wanna encourage you with the scripture sisters from Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. First Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast all our care upon Jesus because he cares for you. So why do I say what we need today are merry moments? I say that because Mary chose the best thing, the right thing, and that's to be before the feet of Jesus. We all have to realize when it's time to stop, take a break, and be able to place ourselves at the feet of Jesus. All right, sisters. I just wanted to be able to look at your faces for a little bit. Um, and just going back to our text in verses 39 through 40 of our text, it says, she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But we saw that Martha was very busy and distracted. And she approached Jesus and she said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and do her part. Martha and Mary were both women that loved Jesus and had a relationship with him, but their priorities were different. When it came to getting to know him and developing a deeper relationship with him, Martha was so worried about how the house looked, what the food, uh, what food needed to be prepared. Martha wanted everything to be just right for Jesus. She cared how things looked, smelled, tasted, and felt in her home. It's important to note during these times though in history, the way you showed hospitality was a reflection of the respect you had for your guests. And it was a cherished virtue and a big deal in that day. It, also, it is also important to note that women were not allowed to sit at the feet of a man and learn. Only men were allowed to be disciples or students, and they would sit at their rabbi's or teacher's feet and learn from them. Sisters, what Mary was doing was countercultural. Mary was expected to be in the kitchen away from the men while they were learning. Because of the social norms and expectations of her, Martha could not grasp the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was in her home, speaking wisdom and life to all that wanted to receive it. Mary, on the other hand, removed herself from all the busy work so she could sit at Jesus's feet without any distractions and learn from Jesus. This is how many of us are successful in doing that every time we need to, removing ourselves from the busyness and placing our feet at the feet of Jesus. How many of us spend more time devoting ourselves to merry moments versus being caught up in everything that's going on? Sisters, let me tell you, the feminist movement did not liberate or set you free. Jesus Christ did. It was the tradition and the culture of, that, of the times that oppressed women. Jesus came to set women free from the stigmas, social depravity, belittling, demoralization, devaluing, and domestic oppression. Read your Bible, it's all in there. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I came, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. But for that, he lets us know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Sisters, Mary decided to step out on her faith. And she made the decision to sit at Jesus' feet as he was teaching, 
Mary said, I will not be bound by what other people expected of me. I will not be intimidated by others talking about me, others' opinions of me, the latest trends, or even any threats from other people. I will not be distracted by the many things there are to do around me when it is clear that Jesus is talking and I should be listening. Mary realized there are times when she can't focus and listen well while doing other things. I said, Mary realized there are times when she can't focus and listen well while doing other things. I'm sure Mary knew how to cook and clean just like her sister Martha, but Mary realized at that time, Jesus was in the room and she was not going to miss out what Jesus had to say. Mary was okay with not being popular among all the other women. She was willing to be an outcast and not be moved by the pressure of her older sister. Sisters, do we have women or church mothers in our lives that can be Martha's? We better watch out and we better pray. And let us not be the Martha's that are distracted by with the good things, with the things that are necessary. God wants to teach us how to do all the things that are necessary and handle the details, but handle it with the right posture, the right attitude, the right energy. How often do we miss opportunities to step out on faith for Jesus because we are bound by, by peer pressure? We are scared to step outside of the box. The opinions of others mean too much or we are consumed by our culture and can't discern good from evil and right from wrong anymore. How many of us keep putting Jesus on the back burner and we keep doing things to prepare um, everything else around us? In doing this, we fail to prioritize him in our everyday life. Do we tell ourselves, I can wait until I finish school to put Jesus first? Do we tell ourselves, I, can, I need to get a reliable car first. Do we tell ourselves, I need to save more money. I need to get a promotion first. I need to find the right man. I need the kids to get a little bit older. I need to wait until I get a thousand followers and 500,000 likes and shares on my social media. Maybe when I get a better house or move in a better neighborhood. Do we wait until we have traveled the world or wait until we scratch more things off our bucket list before we give, before we put Jesus first and become a true disciple. None of these things mentioned are wrong and none of the things Martha was doing was wrong, but she was not choosing the best thing, the necessary thing that could not be taken from her. I'm going to share screen. Back to the text in verse 40 and 41. It says, but Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. And she approached him and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things. The things Martha was doing were not wrong, but it was her posture, her attitude, her negative, haughty, highbrow controlling type A personality that postured her in the way that was not becoming and favorable to the Lord. This left her frustrated. When Martha looked up and saw her little sister sitting at Jesus's feet, her priorities got flipped upside down and she became upset to the point that she questioned Jesus' compassion for her. She questioned Jesus's love, care, and concern for her. She had a nerve to ask Jesus if he even cared that Mary was not helping her. And then she had a nerve to tell Jesus what to do. 
Now, how many of us have found ourselves so caught up and wrapped up in what we thought and what we think things should be done and how it should be done that we had a nerve to tell Jesus what needed to be done and what he should do? Look at the nerve and audacity of Martha. She became so self-focused and so self-righteous and concerned about what her sister was doing. She missed what was happening before her, that the savior was in her home. She felt that she could boss him around. There are a few instances when the Lord calls a person's name twice. Moses, Moses, Samuel, Samuel, Abraham, Abraham, Jacob, Jacob, Simon, Simon, Saul, Saul, and now Martha, Martha. He is trying to get them to pause and pay attention. Jesus does not fault her with Jesus does not fault her with sin for being a multitasker. He doesn't slap her on the hand for being busy. And he doesn't even say you are wrong for trying to get those things done. God is not upset because we have to multitask every now and then. But he does say every now and then we have to have a merry moment. We need to pay attention. A merry moment is when you choose not to be distracted and focus is when you choose not to be distracted and you focus on your discipleship. When you choose meditation over multitasking, when you pause, when you are trying to be productive so that you can be prayerful and patient, when you wash the title off, throw away the agenda, turn off the TV and the phone. It's when you learn to be like Mary and sit, be still, be silent, and just listen. Merry moments are becoming foreign to us because society has convinced us that being important is being busy. Merry moments help us. Merry moments provide opportunities and they help us to listen to the Lord. The ability to hear what God is saying. God doesn't shout over our noise. We have to learn to turn the noise down so we can hear him. I remember when NJ was a little younger and I was yelling up to him and I was asking, I was calling his name and asking him to do something. And when he finally heard me, I said, boy, did you hear me? And he said, "Ma, the TV was up. You got to yell louder. I said, no, you need to turn the TV down. God, so that you can hear me. God says in Hebrews 3.15, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion, as in the rebellion. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They help us to have discernment in our decision-making. Merry moments help us to make wise choices. While sitting at Jesus' feet, you will be able to see all your possibilities for the decisions you need to make and not just the obvious ones. Instead of jumping into the decision and rushing it, you need to sit, be prayerful and see what the Lord has to say. We remember our sister, Sarah. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. They put you at peace with other people. Mary's posture helps you to have healthy relationships with others. When you are looking at Jesus, you are not gossiping and slandering others. You are not trying to push your will onto them, but encouraging them unto what the will of the Lord is. Look at the posture of Martha. She is full of strife, anger, frustration with her sister. She is upset and mad with her. So much so she goes to Jesus, probably while he was teaching, and she questions like I said, Jesus' compassion and love for her. She tells him to tell Mary to get up and help her. In other words, she says, tell her to be more like me and do what I say. Jesus turns to Martha and says, no, be like Mary. Next time someone snaps at you, sis, you need to step back and say, you need to take a Mary moment. How many of us let our Martha moments put us at odds with people? Merry moments help us to worship without worry. Martha was unconcerned what her big sister was saying or doing. She was confident in the fact that Jesus was pleased with her discipleship to him and Jesus was not going to take that away from her. Jesus told Martha, Mary chose the one thing that was needed and that was to worship him 
and him alone. Mary took the position of humility, learner, someone that is focused and in control of her emotions, feelings. When you serve God as a duty, you have a problem. You will become a complainer and the focus shifts off Jesus onto what you want and how you think things should be. Martha needs Jesus to minister to her instead of her ministering to him. If you can serve with a pure heart and the right motives, you have the right posture and you go on and you serve away. We must first fill ourselves with Jesus so we can pour into others with the right attitude and heart posture. We must be life givers and not life takers. Anxiety, frustration, busyness takes from us, but patience, understanding, compassion, humility, time with God gives us life, health, balance, and tranquility. Here are some scriptures to encourage you about how God wants us to know him, to learn of him. God reminds us in James 4, 8, that if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. Sisters, let us now have a merry moment. Pause, sit still, close all your screens, your browsers, and the other links that you probably have up in the background. Put your phone down. Say quiet, please, to the person next to you that may be talking. It seems weird to sit in silence sometimes, doesn't it? But we must learn to give God our undivided attention and set everything else aside. Take a moment of prayer. Take a moment to pray and ask God to help you prioritize him and all things so you can learn to hear him, to obtain clarity, to have internal peace and the proper worship so that you may be pleasing to him in all that you do. Amen. Sisters, be blessed and always remember that what we need are merry moments. All right, sis, thank you. That was wonderful. The chat is blowing up right now. Your message has really blessed us. We have to beware of the distraction. And, you know, I was just typing into the chat, but I might as well say it. That merry moment is an excellent time for self-reflection and prayer. That's a wonderful message. Sisters, in Exodus chapter 33, verses 18 to 23, Moses asked God, please show me your glory, to see God's face, to see his glory, and to know his ways. But God told him, my glory will be too bright for you. Just study my word and bathe in the afterglow. If we think of God as light and his word is lighting our path, then this light is afterglow. Let's take a moment to meditate on his word and the lessons we've received this evening. And if anyone wants to comment or has a question for either one of our speakers, now's the time. <clears throat> Feel free to unmute. As we bathe in the afterglow. I just, Sister Sybil? I just want to thank Sister Myra. Um, as I told you, sisters, she was going to be heavy duty, full entree, and you did not, you did not at all disappoint. Um, I I really appreciate your merry moment because I never even thought of that, but it, the way you put it, absolutely, absolutely. So thank you for that. And Sister Erica, um, I really appreciated the action steps to transformation. Whenever I'm in any one of your sessions, I learn, and tonight was no different. So thank you to both of you for um, just filling us up tonight. Really appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, sisters. Did anyone else have anything they wanted to say? Sister Myra, I too like that uh, Mary moment. It's just, it's revealing to me to 
a lot of times, which I don't do is look at myself first, make sure that before I start moving about that, I'm in a correct, in a right space. And that really, like Sister Worley said, says, look at you before moving on. Like that. Amen. Gotta hold the mirror up. Right? Amen. Anyone else? Amen. All right, ladies, I want to thank both of our speakers, Sister Erica, Sister Myra. Thank you so much for blessing us with your wisdom, with your uh, thoughts and, and understanding of sound doctrine. Now, hopefully we've all been edified and we'll walk away with something that we can use that's going to benefit us and help us to grow in our faith, grow in our walk. We're wrapping up. We're closing out. Ladies, check out the chat. Myra and Erica, there's lots of, you know, compliments in there for you. And right now, what I want to do is go into announcements. And there are several that I could share, and I will share them one at a time. I have the flyers. If your announcement is not shown, please feel free to chime in once I'm done so that you too can share uh, information that you have about what's going on. They're not in any particular order. They're just up, you know, from my list. So the Oxen Hill Church of Christ in November, November 16th, is going to be having their community wellness fair. All of these flyers that I'm showing you are available on the virtueinchrist.org calendar. So you can go there, click calendar, virtueinchrist.org, and you can see everything. Also, um, I think this is Beltway. They're doing a trip to Lancaster for um, Daniel at Sight and Sound. And if you've ever been to Sight and Sound, you know it's a tremendous, spectacular experience. So that is on December 6th, and the information is there. Again, all of these are on the website. So if you don't get all the details as I go through, you'll surely be able to get it there. Uh, Beltway Church of Christ is honoring veterans on November 10th after the morning worship. Beltway is in Camp Springs, Maryland. They're also doing, uh, uh, no, this is Oxen Hill. Oxen Hill's doing an immunization event on November 16th. Vaccines are going to be made available from 10 to 12 at their location, Oxen Hill, Maryland. I skipped one. Uh, the Ladies Prayer Breakfast, Suitland Road, is on December 14th this year. The speaker is going to be Sister Charity Ballard from the University Park Church of Christ. She was one of our speakers at Virtue last year. That's held at the Holiday Inn College Park. Uh, the Singles Ministry at Beltway is hosting a seminar. Single Again, Healing and Hope. That is on November 9th. Uh, November 2nd is the Beltway Ladies' Day. I think I pulled the wrong flyer. Um, I think Janiah Sykes and someone else is going to be uh, the speakers there, but it's November 2nd at 10 a.m. at the Beltway Congregation. December 7th, Victory. The acapella group's been around for a long time. They're doing their annual holiday comp uh, concert on December 7th. And finally, we've got the Ladies of Virtue. It is March 6th through the 8th, 2025. Uh, registration, regular registration is open until November 30th. I'm telling you, this is our 14th annual and you will not be disappointed. Several of the sisters who are here this evening have either spoken at Virtue, taught at Virtue, are gonna be speaking or teaching at Virtue coming up in 2025. Again, if you haven't been, please think about coming. Uh, there is a payment plan available for those who would like to participate. All right, ladies, are there any other announcements that anyone would like to share? Okay, and I'm looking in the chat. I don't yes, see any. Sister Go ahead, sis. Um, in the city Church of Christ, it's having their Mother's Day uh, daughter's uh, luncheon November the 9th. Yes, that's right. And I, I thought I pulled that one up, but apparently I did not. But yes, that also, the mother-daughter luncheon is November 9th. 
uh, will be there. Santana will be represented. And I'm bringing my mama. Lord have mercy. I can't believe she's letting me take her anywhere. But this is going to be maybe her second or third experience with Church of Christ. Anything. And I'm just Amen. like, I'm, I'm, I'm on cloud nine that I can get her up out of the house. Amen. That's a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Go mama. Yeah. All right. Any other announcements? Anybody? Okay. Here we go. Oh, go ahead. Hi, Sister Mary Brown. I'm really glad that I came in on the, um, the class this evening. And I thank Sister Robinson for inviting me. And such a great encouragement. And I'm, please pray for my spiritual strength that I will really exercise my um, dedication to the Lord. And I really thank each sister, all the calm, beautiful comments and encouragement. Y'all doing a great job. Doing a great job. Thank you so much. From Central Church of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mary. Thank You're you. You're welcome. All right, ladies, we are we are wrapping up. We thank you so much for being a part of our program this evening. We are going to have closing prayer by our sister Rita Fobbs. And Sister Rita is at the Central Church of Christ in Hemet, California. We coast to coast, y'all. We coast to coast. <laughs> Okay. Yes, right. yes, yes. All yes. right, sis. Thank you for an excellent workshop for just encouragement, enlightening, heartfelt, fulfilling. Sybil, like Sybil said, that plate is full. A lot to eat on, a lot to eat on. Thank you both sisters for an excellent presentation. Um, let's go to our Father in prayer. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father. We come approaching your throne of grace, thanking you for this opportunity like none other to be able to share in your word, to learn, to heed, and to grow. Father, we thank you so much that you have given your son that we might have this word, that we might, might understand your will for our lives and be able to carry it out. We all have been Martha's and we've all have been Mary's father. But as we grow in knowledge and understanding, let us become the Mary that sits at your feet to understand your word and hereby go out and share it with others. Father, thank you for this time to be with all of our sisters from, from coast to coast. Father, thank you for Sister Worley who brought this to the table. And thank you for her inspiration and her foresight. Father, we ask you to be with each family that's represented here, that things may be well with them, that they may continue to do according to your will. They may be comfortable in their own spirit to share all that you've given us. Father, as we separate ourselves from this platform, but never from you, if it's according to your will that we be raised another day, to see a glorious Sunday, to be able to come and worship you in spirit and truth. Father, let us be able to abide in your word, doing those things according to your word. Father, I wouldn't ask any of these things without asking you to please forgive me for my sins that these prayers may not be hindered. Father, ease the troubled hearts, bring joy and laughter to those that are seeking joy, Father, just look down upon all of us. Be with this country, Father, as it's coming into tumultuous times. Father, let us do our part. Let's look to your son, King Jesus. That's our president. That's who will guide us and direct us. No matter who sits on the earthly throne, we know who's on the heavenly throne. Father, this is our prayer. I thank, thank you, Father. For this opportunity in your son's Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Sister Rita, Sister Thanks Janelle, so Sister much. Sybil, Amen. Sister Darlene, everybody that participated. We love you. We love you too. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Love love you Rita. We'll love see you, Rita. We'll see you. Good night. 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 Good night.